guys, so today I will continue my reading. He got lost three times in the sprawl of Houston before he found the office of World Tribes Missions trapped away on the ground floor of a five-story building. He parked his rented car and straightened his tie. He had talked to Mr. Trill twice on a phone and told he was an hour late for the appointment, it, it, it didn't seem to matter. Mr. Trill was polite and so spoken that not eager to help. They exchanged the required pre preliminaries, preliminaries. Now, what can I do for you? Trill asked. I need some information about one of your missionaries. Mon Jomery said. Trill nodded but said nothing. A wrestle lane. The ice dripped as if he was trying to place her. Name doesn't ring a bell, but we have four thousand four thousand people in the field. She's working near the border of Brazil and Bolivia. How much do you know about her? Not much, but we need to find her. For what for what purpose? It's a legal matter. Mon Monjumeri said, with just enough hesitation hesitation to sound suspicious. Trill frowned and pulled his elbows close to his chest. His small smile disappeared. Is there trouble? He asked. No, but the matter is quite urgent. We need to see her. Can you send a letter or a package? Afraid not, her cooperation is needed along with her signature. I assume it's confidential. Extremely. Something clicked and Trill's frown soft softened. Excuse me for a minute. He disappeared. He disappeared from the office and left Mon Monjumeri to inspect the Spartan furnishings. The only decoration was a collection of enlarged photos of Indian children on the walls. Trill was a different person when he returned stiff and unsmiling and uncooperative. I am sorry, Mr. Montgomery, he said without sitting. We will not be able to help you. Is she in Brazil? I am sorry. Bolivia? I am sorry. Does, does she even access? I can answer your question. I can answer your question. Nothing? Nothing. Can I speak to your boss or supervisor? Sure. Where is he? In heaven. After a dinner of thick steaks in mushroom sauce, Joe Stafford and Tip Durban retired to the den. <clears throat> Where a fire rolled. A different butler, a Mexican in a white jacket and stretched jeans, served them very old single malt scotch from Mr. Pellin cabinet. Cuban cigars, cigars were ordered. Pavarotti sang Christmas songs on a distant stereo. I have an idea, just say, as he watched the fire. We have to send someone to find Rachel Lane, right? Tip was in midst of a likely draw for his chigger, so he only nodded. And we can just send anyone. It has to be a lawyer, someone who can explain the legal issues. And it has to be someone from our firm because of confidential. Confidentiality, 
his jaws filled with small a tip cap nodding so who do we send tip ex exhaled slowly truck both his mouth and his nose and smoke boiled across his face and drift upward how long how long will it take he finally asked i don't know but it's uh but it's not a quite a quick trip brazil's a big country almost as big as the lower 48 and we're talking jungles and mountains these people are so remote they've never seen a car i'm not going we can hire we can hire local guides and such but it still might take a week or so. Don't they have cannibals down here? No. Anacondas, relax, Dave. You're not going. Thanks. But, but you see the problem, don't you? We have 60 lawyers, all busy as hell and, and swamp with more work than we can possibly do. None of us can suddenly drop everything and go find this woman. Send a paralegal. Just didn't like that idea. He spit, he sipped his coach and puffed his cigar and listened to the flames pop in the fireplace. It has not to be liar, he said almost to himself. The butler returned with fresh drinks. He inquired about dessert and coffee, but the guests already had what they want. What about Nate? Just asked when they were alone again. It looked obvious. It was obvious. Just had been thinking about Nate all along, and this slightly. Irritate tip. You kidding? He said. No. They, they, they pondered the idea of sending Nate for a while, each working past their initial objection on and fears. Nate O'Reilly was a partner, a 23 year man who was, at the moment, locked away in a rehab unit in the Blue Ridge Mountain West on DC of DC. In the past ten years he had been a frequent visitor to rehab facilities each time drying out, breaking habits, growing closer to a higher power, working off his tan and tennis game, and vowing to kick his addiction once and for all and while he swore that each crest was the last one the final descends the descans to rock bottom each was always followed by an even harder fall now at the age of 48 he was broke twice divorced and freshly indicated for income tax evasion his future was anything but bright. He used to be an outdoor type, didn't he? Tip asked. Oh yeah, scuba diving, rock climbing, all that crazy stuff. Then the slide began and he did nothing but work. The slide had begun it in his mid-thirties at about the time he put together an impressive string of large first verdicts against now negligent doctor, negligent doctor. Nate O'Reilly became a star in the magical mall protest game and also began drinking happily and using coke. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you.